Hello and welcome back to Bagel Top Games for yet another legendary Marvel randomizer game. Real quick before we start, if you'd like to skip this entire intro and go right to the first turn, go ahead and check for the timestamp in the description. So you might have noticed things look a little bit different today. That's because today's theme is going to be a villains themed game. The reason for that is because when I ran the randomizer for this specific game, I drew three villainous characters, one kind of neutral character in Man-Thing, and I only had one traditional hero in Iron Fist, so I decided to make it a villains game. That means this game is going to include new recruits and Madam Hydra. However, since none of the cards have the word bindings on them, bindings will not be included. However, we will be using sidekicks and wounds, since some cards in this game do have the term sidekick and wound on them. Other small changes are the Hydra cards instead of the shield cards, and as well as the city being reversed as you do in a villain's game. Otherwise, everything's exactly the same. Most of the terms are synonymous with the terms in the hero's game, so there won't be too much of a difference. Speaking of not too much of a difference, we still have a mastermind and a scheme instead of a commander and plot. Speaking of which, our mastermind today is Arcade. He wants to be the only villain in town, so he went ahead and brought the other villains as well as a couple of other characters into Murder World to keep them out of his way. So Arcade, like other cards from the X-Men set, use the term Human Shields. So at the start of the game, Arcade is going to capture five Human Shields. That means we place five bystanders face down behind him. I cannot fight Arcade until he has no more Human Shields. The way you get rid of a Human Shield is you spend the character who's captured the Human Shields attack value per Human Shield, and you can rescue one of them as a bystander. Once they're all gone, then you can fight the Mastermind. And he always leads Murder World, which is in the game, and then we'll talk about the Master Strike when that comes up. So let's go ahead and make sure that Arcade gets his five human shields. All right, so I'm gonna have to spend 15 attack before I can even hit him. Now, as I mentioned, Arcade wants to be the only villain on the block, so he is trying to become the master of tyrants. So for this setup, there are eight twists, choose three other masterminds and shuffle their 12 tactics into the villain deck. Those tactics are tyrant villains with their printed attack and no abilities. So I went ahead and used the randomizer to generate three random masterminds, happened to come up with Baron Helmet Zemo, Illuminati, and Strife. So none of the text on their cards matter, the only thing that matters is the attack value. And we've got three different levels of difficulty here. Strife is not going to be hard to hit just based off his attack value. 11 and the Illuminati is going to be a little harder. This is going to be almost impossible, so luckily there's only three, hopefully we can avoid those. Also, luckily, these have no way to get human shields. That would be terrible. But let's go ahead and put them first into our villain deck just to get them out of the way. Okay, so all 12 tactics are in there. They are tyrant villains, printed attack, no abilities. So as the twists go on and Arcade's influence grows with the other villains trapped in Murder World, the tyrant villains get stronger and evil wins when five tyrant villains escape. So making sure they don't get all the way to the sewers is a high priority. All right, we already started our villain deck. Let's go ahead and finish it. Let's get our two bystanders in the villain deck. Okay, then for our villain groups, we've got Murder World, of course. Now, because Bullseye, for example, is on both of these teams, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this version of the Dark Avengers are automatons that Arcade has conjured up within Murder World. So that's my canon for these. Let's go ahead and throw them into the villain deck. All right, the Hand Ninjas are our henchmen. And per the rules, we have five Master Strikes and eight Scheme Twists. Okay, now as far as our heroes slash allies, we'll have some cool mechanics with Man-Thing, as Man-Thing affects the sewers, and in a villain's game, the sewers is where the bridge normally would be. So we'll see how that plays out. So for our deck, we're going to include Bullseye, Maximus, and Sabretooth as our villains, then Man-Thing as our neutral entity, and somehow being caught up in all of this, Iron Fist, probably teaming up with them to get out of Murder World somehow. And I've got my two Hydra decks for each hand, and then we're gonna go ahead and get all our stuff shuffled. Okay, now that we're all shuffled up, let's fill up our HQ. Who do we have? We've got Iron Fist, Bullseye, Iron Fist, Uwana Sabretooth's Uncommons, and Maximus is rare right off the bat. Some interesting potential recruit to start with. If this is your first time watching a video on Bagel Top Games, you'll notice a couple of things. First, you'll see that the left turn and right turn indicators will come up at each turn, telling you whose turn it is and which round it happens to be. I use this Captain America shield just so I can tell whose turn it is so I don't forget. 
I'm also going to be using these dice to keep track of attack points and recruit points per turn. And with that, let's get started with the first turn. And let's hope we can ease into things. Oh, kind of. It's a bystander. Goes right to the mastermind, and like he hasn't captured enough people already. Again, if you're new here, the way I do this is to take all the cards I have, place them on the right side as if they're in my hand, then when I play them, I put them over here on the left so you know that they have been played. So I've got an even 3-3 three and three split. Let's play them. Now with my 3 attack, I can go ahead and get rid of one of Arcade's human shields. Again, to rescue a human shield, I have to spend the capturer's attack to rescue one. So let's go ahead and spend 3 to get one human shield rescued. Okay, and here it is. And it is a regular bystander. Right to the victory pile. Okay, now with my 3 recruit, let's see how I want to get things started. Now Focus Chi works well when I have different costs of heroes. So I think a lot of the costs for these heroes slash allies are going to be very similar, so this won't work as well as it should, but still a way to ramp up some decent recruit points. Now Fulfill the Contract has dodge like many characters from the villain set, which means if it's in your hand you can choose to discard it and draw a new card instead. Now this one's interesting, it gives me plus one recruit for each adversary or villain group I have in my victory pile. So if I go this route, I'm going to want to have a lot of Dark Avengers or Murder World in my victory pile on this side to get a lot of recruit points. Now with Stealthy Predator being an uncommon card, it's going to be pretty good. Reveal the top three cards of your deck, draw one, discard one, and put the other one back on top of your deck. That's a good card, but I think at the beginning of the game, I definitely need to make sure I lock down some recruit points. Fulfill the Contract Bullseye won't give me recruit points until I have started to get some villain KOs. So by that logic, I think I'm going to go ahead and recruit this... Focus Chi. Okay, and let's go ahead and replace it with, oh look, another instinct card. This should help me next turn. Speaking of next turn, let's go to it. Okay, our first villain perhaps? Yes, our first villain. Dark Spider-Man aka Scorpion has double last stand. The other villains in Dark Avengers, a lot of them have last stand, which means that they get plus one attack for each empty city space. There are four empty city spaces, so Spider-Man is a six attack. I didn't have any Man-Thing cards show up, but Man-Thing also gets buffs when there's empty city spaces, so Man-Thing might be good to cancel that out. But it is impossible for me to generate 6 attack with just my gray cards, so let's see what we can work with. Alright, this is going to convert to 1 attack and 5 recruit. I can't even save a human shield for that, but what I can do is recruit something with my 5 recruit. Now cards with dodge like this will pretty much go with anything because you can always get rid of it from your hand. But no need in having it in your deck if you don't need it at all. I know for a fact that the cards that don't have instinct in this set are going to use a variation of covert, tech, and strength cards. So uh, red, black, and green. And I think that Maximus has a lot of tech prerequisites. And there's some green prerequisites, not as many red for the superpowers. This is tricky because this Sabretooth card, while it is a covert card, works really well with the other Sabretooth cards, which are Instinct, and those cards work better with other Instinct cards, so I think this may want to go to the left as well, which would mean that I wouldn't want to recruit anything for the right side. You know what, let's look at this for a moment. Remember, this gives me plus one recruit for each villain of the same villain group that I have in my victory pile. So if I try to split it up so I have one villain group on one side, one on the other, if I can get one of each of these bullseyes on opposite sides, that'll help me get Recruit on both sides. I should have plenty of Instinct cards in this entire hero deck, so let's go ahead and Recruit this Fulfill the Contract for the right side. Which leaves me with three Recruit left. Oh yes, of course I forgot there's blue bullseye range cards too. But those work with Instinct. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna use the last three of my Recruit to Recruit a Madam Hydra to hopefully get this Maximus sooner than later, so... I'll take one Madam Hydra here and recruit that for three. And with that, it's back to the left side. If we fill up this city, those last stand ones will get, I was gonna say weaker, but never mind, it's a Master Strike. And Arcade's doing some stuff in Murder World, so for his Master Strike, Arcade captures a random bystander from each player's victory pile as a human shield. Only the left side has anything in its victory pile, and that is a single bystander. So this is going to become a human shield for Arcade. Okay, so he's back up to five. Each player who didn't have a bystander gains a wound instead. That is our right side, so the right side is going to get itself a wound, just a regular one. As far as Master Strikes go, not the most debilitating, but annoying, which I guess describes his character. So no Tyrant Villains have appeared yet, that's good. Let's try to get rid of as many human shields as we can. Oh, identical to last turn, that gives us five recruit, one attack. Again, nothing to be done with the one attack, but let's start getting some stuff for our instinct-based deck. 
Unfortunately, Focus Chi again works well with different cost cards, and these are all three cost. So let's spend our five completely. Despite that, we'll start with the recruit points based ones since that's how we have to start our game. Let's recruit Focus Chi for three. And before we move on to this one, just in case, let's see what we get. Okay, we'll get back to that. And we will take this uncommon Sabretooth for two. Start to get something going there. Oh, an identical one. If I can keep these coming, I can start milling through the deck pretty quickly. And with one attack, that is it for this short turn. Let's keep this moving. And we have our first henchman villain. When I fight it, I get one recruit point. This should be useful. But there are three attack. Highest priority is to spend that three attack, getting rid of those human shields on Arcade instead. So these guys might pile up for a while if I choose to not get rid of them. Another evenly split turn, but that can be a pretty good thing. First, like I just said, we can either rescue a human shield for three, or we could take out this hand ninja for three. If we do, we'll get an extra recruit putting us up to four. Is there anything here for four that we would really like to have? Again, not really, because these four cards should probably go to the left-hand deck, if possible. Because Sabretooth will be able to mill through the deck, and these Bullseyes will keep adding attack and drawing cards, so those will pair really well in addition to this. So I'm probably not going to recruit anything but a another Madam Hydra this turn. In fact, let's go ahead and recruit that Madam Hydra right now, since that's all I'm going to recruit. So one Madam Hydra for the right-hand side. All right, and now with our three attack, let's take out one of these human shields. Or not take it out, let's rescue it. Okay, down to four human shields, and this one is a regular bystander. That's fine, it'll save me from some master strikes. And that is it. All right, I predict a tyrant villain showing up, and I was wrong, but it's a trap. I really hate these traps. When you pull a trap as a villain card, you have a condition you must meet. If you do not meet that condition by the end of this turn, something bad happens. So. With animatronic killer clowns, by end of turn I must recruit two heroes or suffer. This trap enters the city as a three attack animatronic killer clown token villain that captures a human shield. Now looking at the recruit pile, I have again, three three costs and one two costs. So that's possible if I can generate five recruit. I've already shuffled, so we'll see if I can do that. And it looks like I might be able to do that. So let's play our gray cards first. Now we're at two attack and recruit. Now I'll play Focus Chi. Remember, this gives me one recruit for each hero I have with a different cost. I have three different costs. Focus Chi is a three cost, the gray cards are zero cost, and then Stealthy Predator is a two cost, so that is going to give me three more recruit to make a total of five. So I already have enough to recruit two cards, but let's check this out. Stealthy Predator, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Let's do it. It is three identical Hydra operatives. Draw one, discard one, and put the other back on top. So it doesn't matter which is which, let's do all three. Draw one, discard one, put the other back on top of the deck. So when I play this one, I get one more recruit. Okay, I can definitely meet the conditions and avoid this trap now, but which ones do I want to recruit? Check out Everything's a Weapon. I honestly love this card because I love the character of Bullseye. It represents him throwing literally anything with perfect aim, hitting something, and then keeping going by drawing a card. So I think what I'm going to do is recruit one of these and then this Sabretooth card so that they can work together. So first we'll recruit Everything's a Weapon for three. And we always have to repopulate before we do anything else. Okay, now check out Leap of the Tiger. It says reveal the top card of your deck, then put it back on top of your deck or into your discard pile. If that card was an instinct ally, you get two attack. So you see how this works well with the Bullseye Draw card because it just adds two attack onto this, helps you reveal cards, draw things, so let's also recruit Leap of the Tiger. Okay, and in its place is going to go another Leap of the Tiger. We already have a lot of good cards that work well together, and we haven't even seen any of the Tyrant enemies. That's a good sign. Now that two attack will still do us nothing, because even though, again, this says two, it has double last stand, which means, oh, I misspoke before, so this has double last stand, so it didn't have four attack before. It had eight, plus eight, I should say, plus two, so ten before. Now it has plus three empty open spaces, double last stand, that's plus six. So this Spider-Man is an eight right now. So there's nothing left for me to fight with two attack, and that's it for me. Oh, I was about to move on, but I forgot to check out this trap. Yeah, we did recruit two heroes, so that just doesn't happen. So this goes into my victory pile, which I'm now just realizing will not work with that Iron Fist card because a trap is not a villain, which means that the Murder World set has fewer villains to fight. Okay, now it's really the right side's turn, and the right side is dealing with its first scheme twist. 
Okay, I got lucky because there are no tyrant villains yet in the city. Twist one to seven, put this twist under a tyrant villain as dark power, it gets plus two. There are no tyrant villains in the city, so this does not go under one. So this is a wash, so arcade has misfired. That is good for me. I'm getting a lot of lucky breaks here, so let's hope I don't waste the opportunities. So let's play our zero cost grays first. Now let's see, I have two Madam Hydras here. I can choose to play both of them, play one of them, or play none of them. If I play both of them, my recruit will go up to a total of six. Not enough to get that Maximus. If I only had one more attack, I could have fought this Hand Ninjas, get a seventh recruit, and then recruited Maximus, but that's not going to work. In addition, I must have discarded one from my hand, so I would have had to discard these two attacks anyway to play these, which I could have done. But seeing as how I want, again, these cards to go to the left-hand side, I'm going to dodge both of these cards to see if I get any more attack to maybe take something else out, maybe rescue a human shield. And I have to do these individually anyway, so let's dodge this Madam Hydra and then see what we draw. It is going to be another operative. So I just exchanged two recruit for one. But let's try it with this one, dodge this one, and we're going to get a second one. So I basically just threw away two recruit points. That's what I get, I suppose. Okay, I'm gonna get one more Madame Hydra because I really wanna recruit that Maximus and get it out of the city. So to increase my chances, I'm gonna take just one more and hopefully that'll help me in my next couple of turns. But that is it for now. A Tyrant villain is gonna have to show up at some point, but not yet. Once again, Arcade captures a human shield from each player's victory pile. This time it's the opposite of the last time I drew a Master Strike. The left side does not have any bystanders in the victory pile, so the, so the left side is going to go ahead and get a wound, just a regular one. The right side does have a bystander, so it is going to go back to Arcade as a human shield, but I am saved from getting a wound, so that's something. No Tyrant Villains yet. It is very likely that all the Tyrant Villains will show up at once, which makes it really hard to stop them. And again, I lose when five of them escape. So now we can take our turn. Our obedient Hydra troops will give us three recruit, two attack, and Focus Chi gives us one recruit for each hero with a different cost that I have. I have two costs, three and zero, so I get two more recruit. Nothing again I can fight, but I can keep my recruit streak going. Let's take the two Sabertooth cards. So first I'll recruit this one, and then I think I'm gonna wanna recruit Stealthy Predator in its place. Oh, interesting, a green Iron Fist. Yeah, let's recruit Stealthy Predator for my last two recruit points. It'll be great if I can start chaining some instinct, especially yellow cards. Hey, we got a couple of green cards out now. The right side, if it generates enough recruit points, is going to have to make a decision next turn. And by next turn, I mean right now. Next we have our first Tyrant Villain. Again, none of the effects matter. It just has an attack of 11. Also, dangerous things are that if it escapes, it counts towards the evil wins condition. And as soon as I pull a scheme twist, it gets stronger. So I'm going to say it's high priority to take that one out, but I haven't even been able to generate enough attack to take out my henchmen. So we'll see what we can do here. Okay, right off the bat, we're going to start with this four recruit here. Now, besides our wound, we have a fulfill the contract bullseye. Now, this means I would get plus one for each villain group I have in my victory pile, but I have nothing in my victory pile on the right side. So this is going to give me nothing, so I have no reason not to dodge it. Put it in my discard, draw a new card. And my new card is another recruit point for me. So with five recruit, I can start taking a look at these new green cards I've pulled. Wield the Iron Fist. You get one attack for each hero with a different cost you have. That's Iron Fist mechanic. It works like his focus chi, but with attack instead. I'm going to look through my discard pile on the right. I have a two cost, a bunch of zeros, of course, a three cost. And with that four cost, I could generate some different amounts of cost here. So that could generate up to four attack for me. Now, Man Thing is real interesting this game, not only because it's a villains game with a reversed city, but we also have the Dark Avengers, which have Last Stand, which have to do with Man Thing in the sense that the mechanics have to do with which city spaces the villains are in. Now teleport means instead of playing a card this turn that you have in your hand, you can teleport it, which means you add it to your next hand as an additional card. The question is which of these two cards is gonna generate more attack for me sooner? Like I said, the Iron Fist can generate up to four, maybe. This one gives me plus two usable against villains in the sewers or the mastermind, because again, it's a villains game, the sewers are at the end of the city, which would be useful. For example, with the nature of this double last stand Spider-Man, if he gets to the sewers and the city's full, he gets no last stand, he's a two attack, and then I basically get to defeat 
this Spider-Man for free or with the plus two I get from Man-Thing. However, more attack is probably going to be generated by this Iron Fist sooner, so I'm going to use all five recruit points I have, four of them anyway, to recruit this Iron Fist here. Hoping it comes back around and I can get some attack to clear out the city quickly. Man-Thing goes back and in the lair we have... Oh, Iron Fist rare already. Living weapon, eight attack. Reveal cards from your deck until you have revealed cards, two cards with the same cost to draw all the cards you revealed. This eight attack would go a long way at getting rid of these tyrant villains. And I did stockpile a few Madame Hydras on the right side. I need to keep doing that so I can recruit this as soon as possible. This is now first priority over Maximus, but I'll have to wait for that. All right, I'm sensing this is when danger starts to ramp up. And I was right. Luckily, the Strife cards only have an attack of seven, but I still have to defeat them. Okay, I've generated two attack and two recruit if I play these, and then I get to Stealthy Predator once again. Reveal the top three cards of your deck, draw one of them, discard one, and put the other back on top of your deck, and here they are. Two operatives, one soldier. Which one do I need the most? If I take the soldier, that'll give me one more attack, give me three attack. Then I not only could fight the hand ninjas and get one more recruit and recruit something for three, but I clear out the city a little bit. Or I could just take the other operative and recruit something without clearing out the city. I think it's in my best interest to clear the city out so that I can prevent these guys from escaping. Again, five escape and I lose. So we will draw the soldier. I'm gonna play him right away because why not? And we'll discard one of these and put the other one back on top of the deck. And the wound does nothing. Let's use our three attack to fight and defeat this hand ninja, which has just given me one more recruit and I will use all three of this recruit to recruit this everything's a weapon bullseye. All right, perfect. I should start drawing some of those good cards soon. Was clearing out the city a wise move? Potentially. All right, here's where we have our bullseye with us and bullseye against us. Dark Hawkeye, AKA Bullseye, has one single last stand and a KOing hero fight effect. Get on the bridge. And what do we have to play? Well, check that out. So here's the, here's the rub. On paper here, we'd have enough to recruit something for high cost. But if I want to play one of these Madame Hydras, I have to discard something else. So if I wanted to play all three, I'd have to discard the other three cards. So the most recruit I could get this turn with this setup is six recruit, which of course is disappointing because this is seven and this is nine. So I think my best odds are going to be to dodge some of these. So first thing I'm going to do is dodge the first one and see what I get. So this goes to my discard and in its place we get, okay, another soldier. If I can get one more attack, I can chip away at a human shield. So let's dodge one more of these and we get a, hmm, an operative. Now if I want to play this and get five recruit, I only get one attack. I already have three recruit I could get. Hmm. So yeah, let's dodge this last one and just roll the dice and see what we get. Okay. Oh, I got three attack out of it. So I did get enough to get a human shield rescued. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's rescue one human shield. And we've got a standard bystander once again. Oh, I forgot to play these first. So play them, get the points, then use them up. Now we'll actually play these three recruit cards. A new Maximus popped up. Let's take a look at it. The more this game goes on, the less and less likely it seems I'm going to be able to use Maximus in this game because I haven't really pulled that many and the game's already got on. Better if I stick to the green cards to keep that up. However, this is a two recruit card that does not make me discard another card to play it, which could go towards getting some of these high powered things. It is unlikely though that I will be able to trigger the superpower, but if I can use it as a catalyst to get some of the rare cards, that would be worth it. So I'm gonna take a gamble on this and recruit it. I hope that pays off for me. And moving on to the left side again. Are we about to fill up the city? Yes, we are about to fill up the city. The bad news is we just played our strongest enemy, which is our tyrant villain, Baron Helmet Zemo. The good news is anything with Last Stand right now does not get any plus anything from Last Stand because the city is full. How is this going to play out? Let's see. Okay, the gray cards will give us one attack, three recruit. Now everything's a weapon has a instinct superpower. I have no instinct cards, so let's try to get one. If one of these three top cards of my deck is an instinct card, and there's a good chance it will be, then I can get some added effect with Bullseye, get another card out of it. And the top three are, one of them is. So this is the one I will draw. I'm actually, let's see, I'm actually gonna keep this one for next turn on top of my deck and then discard the soldier. 
Now Leap of the Tiger is going to reveal the top card of my deck. First I get to attack from it. There we go. Then I need to reveal the top of the deck. I know what it is. It's my Hydra Operative. I'm going to discard it. Not an instinct ally. I don't get the plus two. However, I can play everything's a weapon. I get plus two for the base. And I also trigger the superpower, which means I get to draw a card. Let's see what I get. Oh, cool. Focus Chi. You get one recruit for each hero with a different cost you have. So let's see. Three, zero, two, three, three. Only three recruit, but, you know, it's something. This is how things are going to chain with this deck. Hopefully, I can get rid of some of the gray cards. All right. Five attack, six recruit. Pretty good. Regarding the city, I could take out either Dark Avenger. Let's look at Hawkeye Bullseyes. If I fight him, I KO one of my heroes, then choose one. Each other player KOs one of their heroes. Each other player gains a zero cost hero from the KO pile. Okay, so option A, I take him out. Each side gets to KO something. That's usually pretty good. Option B is I take out Dark Spider-Man slash Scorpion for two attack. In which case, I'd reveal the top two cards of my deck, KO one of them that costs two or less, put the rest back in any order. Now, if I took him out, I could spend the other three to rescue a human shield. Now, the problem is... I would be worried that Stealthy Predator could be in there, which cost two, and I could KO that, but I think I have, yeah, you know, one's in my discard and one's in play, so that won't happen. Yeah, I'm gonna do this, if not just for the reason that if I take out Hawkeye and I KO one on the right, that hand's only gonna have five cards, and one of them's already a wound, I can see that. So, let's do this, let's spend two, since there is a full city, it only has two attack, let's KO Dark Spider-Man slash Scorpion for two. And I'll reveal the top two cards in my deck, I KO one that costs two or less, but neither of them do, so they both go back. But I do have three attacks still left, so let's use that to get rid of one of these human shields. And it is, ooh, it's a special one. Oh cool, it's one of the new ones from Into the Cosmos. When you rescue this bystander, each player with the most victory points draws a card. Interesting. The right side only has one victory point for one bystander. And so just with the villain I just took out, the left side has more victory points. And so I haven't recruited anything yet. Can I get one more recruit point? And then maybe, well, we'll see. First, let's put this bystander back into my victory pile. And the card I draw is, oh, it is another focus chi. So how many different costs do I have once again? I have zero, two, three, three more recruit for me. And that makes nine. Thank you, bystander. So guess what? That is going to give me enough to get this iron fist. Now that should probably go to the right side for the superpower, but it is higher priority to get this into play. And with Stealthy Predator, this gives me a better chance at getting this into play as well, as well as this bullseye drawing cards. So I will definitely right now recruit this Iron Fist. That was a lucky play. And hopefully I can KO some stuff so I can get rid of the gray cards, keep that card coming back. Oh, hey, a red card to trigger that Maximus on the other side. All right, the faster I move through the turns, the faster I can get back to that rarer Iron Fist. All right, the Mastermind has three human shields. Am I gonna be able to get rid of them? We've got our third Tyrant villain in the city now. This is troublesome because I've only drawn one out of eight scheme twists possible. The twists only make the Tyrant villain stronger, so let's see if I can take one out this turn. Okay, let's do the three recruit first, and then fulfill the contract. Once again, I haven't defeated anything over here, so there are no villain groups in the victory pile. So this is a big fat zero. So let's dodge it. Into the discard you go. And I've drawn another one of these. That means when I play this, counting each cost of hero I have, now I only have two different costs. I thought I would pull something that wasn't a zero, but the most that would have done is generated three attack for me. I could have taken out a human shield, and I still wouldn't have cleared out the city. So I generated two attack, but unfortunately that's all. It looks like unless the next thing is not a villain, we're going to have our first tyrant villain escape. We can let that happen, I guess, but I'd rather it not. Now I think what I want to do is recruit this man thing that has teleport and again gives me two attack towards anything in the sewers or the mastermind. Let's recruit it. And now that we have just two recruit left. Oh, another one. Let's take the second one right here. All right. So two of those is not bad, especially if we, oh, there's a third one. Can't recruit that one. But unfortunately, that is all I can do and I hope nothing escapes next turn. All right. I've got some good cards over here on the left now. Is it going to be enough? But first, let's see if something escapes. And we've drawn a location, so the good news is nothing escapes. The bad news is locations. So Sentry's Watchtower is going to spring up on the bridge. Villains here get last stand. Villains who already have it get the bonus again. So this means that any tyrant villains here get even more powerful than they already are. Fantastic. Oh, but look, if I fight it, I gain the hero in the HQ space under this. So that's a way to get this rare Maximus with some attack instead of recruit. 
but let's go ahead and put it on the bridge. Now typically locations are supposed to go above the city space so you can see them, but with our limited space, we're going to put them underneath. We'll have to remember that that is a location. All right, let's see what I can do with this. Playing our gray cards is going to give us not much. Now here's where Sabretooth combos with himself. So Leap of the Tiger lets me reveal the top card. If it's an instinct ally, I get two more attack. So if I use Stealthy Predator first, I can reveal the top three of the deck and make sure that there's an instinct card there. That is, if one of them is an instinct card. So let's do that, reveal the top three of my deck. What do I have? And look, I have an instinct card. So I want this to be on top of my deck, so let's put that there, because that'll combo with Leap of the Tiger. I want to draw this card so that I can use it after I'm done with that. Then I'm going to discard my Hydra Soldier. Now we can play each of our Leap of the Tigers. The first one says, reveal the top card of your deck. We know what it is. It is this Iron Fist right here. Put it back on top of your deck or into your discard pile. I'm going to leave it on top of the deck. If it was an instinct ally, I get two attack. So let's put this back. So I get two base plus the two extra, which is going to give me plus four attack. I get five attack total. Oh, I've reversed these. I'm going to swap these here. There, that's better. So I'm going to play my second Leap of the Tiger. And it does the exact same thing. Reveal the top. It's an instinct. I'm going to get four more attacks. So now I'm up to nine. That's pretty great. And let's give myself an opportunity to get even more attacks. So let's look at the top three as it stands now. So the first card in the deck is the one we already revealed. And the other two are just Hydra Operatives. So real quick, let's look at this. If I draw this, how many recruit am I going to get? So I have a three cost, zero cost, two cost. I generate three recruit, which would give me a total of four. If I didn't get that, I'd have to take one of these, which would give me a total of two recruit. The best that could give me is this bullseye, which isn't paying off that well for me. So I am going to play this so I can get that other Leap of the Tiger. Seems to be working well for me. So these other two, one has to go to the discard, one goes on top of the deck. And then I will play Focus Chi now, which gives me three recruit. So now I'm up to four recruit and nine attack. Not bad. All right, with that nine attack, here are my options. I cannot fight either of these two. They're too strong. However, I can fight either one of these Tyrant Villains or this Bullseye. Or I could fight the location, but that would be a bad idea since if this is a villain, I'm going to let this one escape. Reminder, any villain that's in this location in Sentry's Tower is going to get Last Stand. However, Last Stand only works if there's an empty city space. So if I take this Strife out, that means this one's going to get Last Stand or whatever lands there is going to get Last Stand. So let's take this one out. It gets no bonus from Last Stand because all the city spaces are full and gives me another shot at getting rid of these tyrants before they escape. So I will spend seven of my nine attack to KO this tyrant villain. If I got lucky, I could still do that before I pulled any more scheme twists. Two more attacks, again, not gonna do anything for me, but I did clear up that city space, except for the location. And yes, let's start compounding on our attack. Let's recruit this Leap of the Tiger here for three. And things are only looking good for the left side. Yeah, I think it might be too late for anything Maximus themed, but we'll see. All right, moving on. All right, let's see if clearing out the city was what I needed to do. And it was. Looks like Sentry is going to end up in his watchtower. So while in the bank of the streets, this card's name is The Void. It gets plus five and it gets fight KO up to two cards from your discard pile. That could be useful for the left-hand side to whittle it down. But I'll have to wait until it gets to the streets first, then the bank. Glad that I cleared out the city last turn, but another strong villain in the city is not really what I needed. Especially with this hand. I'm in trouble. Okay, I've generated four recruit, but only one attack here. And then if I were to play this, I'd only get two attack against this or this. I can't fight Arcade at all until I get rid of those human shields. And this Tyrant is an 11 attack, so I need nine more attack to take it down. So because I can't really use it this turn for anything, I'm going to teleport it. It goes into my hand for next turn as an extra card, which leaves me with a full city that I can't do anything about and four recruit. Enslave the Will costs 4, however, besides the 2 attack, it has a tech trigger that lets me gain a sidekick when I defeat villains. No other heroes, I think, have any tech cards except for Maximus, and I don't think I'm going to be able to trigger that that often. Now, 2 attack is pretty good, but the Teleport Man thing also gives me 2 attack, granted against these two areas, but that's still something. And Form from Ooze is especially good with the villain set since the sewers are where the most powerful things usually end up. I could potentially teleport a bunch of those and use them all at the same time. So let's keep the green cards going. Let's go ahead and recruit this other form from Ooze. And who knows, maybe this will be another one. It's not. 
but that would be good for the left hand side. I don't really want to recruit any of these things, so I am going to have to pick a sidekick or a new recruit. New recruits from the villain set give me one attack, let me draw a card, but I have to put the whole thing back. I could go with a standard sidekick, which could end up with a special sidekick. I think this will be most useful for this deck because if I get a bunch of form from oozes, maybe one extra attack and one extra draw will help me out in a big way. So let's spend my final two recruit to get this new recruit. Now we have to grit our teeth, end our turn, and hope nothing escapes. All right, cross your fingers, everyone. Okay, good, it's another trap. Good news is that means no escape for now. The bad news is this is another animatronic killer clown. I have to recruit two heroes or it will enter the city and make things escape. Let's see if we can prevent this, shall we? Hey, check it out, I drew that rare iron fist. Only three recruit, not a good sign when it comes to preventing the trap. However, let's see what living weapon can do for us. So first I get a whopping eight attack for a total of 10. Then reveal cards from your deck until you have revealed two cards with the same cost. Draw all the cards you revealed. Oh, maybe I can get some more recruit this way. Okay, here's my deck. Let's go ahead and start revealing stuff. First we have a three cost and a zero cost. This next one could be a zero cost, let's see. And a three cost. Okay, it stops there, but not bad. So I've revealed two cards with the same cost. Let's put my deck back where it was. And now all of these cards are drawn. So let's go ahead and put Living Weapon back and play the rest of these cards. Okay, gray card first, up to four recruit. Then we'll play Focus Chi. Once again, one recruit for each hero with a different cost that I have. So I have a three, a zero, and a nine. This is also a three. So again, that's three different costs. Three, zero, nine gives me three more recruit for a total of seven. And finally, Everything's a Weapon gives me two more attack. And then his Instinct Superpower, which I just qualified for, which is draw a card. And the card draw is another one. So this is gonna chain with itself. Well, not quite with itself, but because I already have an Instinct card out. So once again, two more attack to get 14. Triggered by that last Iron Fist, I get to draw a card. And we have another Soldier. Great, seven recruit, 15 attack. We can do some good stuff here. As Uncle Ben said, with great power comes great responsibility. So what should we do? Let's start with attack and go from left to right. So Arcade has three human shields. That is gonna cost nine. That means I would have six attack left after that. I could hit him once for three, but I know that his tactics give him more human shield. So I may only be able to hit him once with this 15. I also don't wanna lose the scheme. So I have to get rid of some of these tyrant villains. If one's going to escape, it's probably going to be this Baron Helmet Zemo because it's hard to get 16 attack, let alone four different times. Now I could take out this Tyrant Villain Illuminati, which would leave me with four attack. But I think my best move is to split up my attack, seven here and seven there, take out both of these sevens. Here's why. While the Sentry has a cool fight effect, if you fight it in the right place, it also gets plus five attack. And I really need to use those resources elsewhere. Plus, he's also on the location, which is kind of annoying. And if I take out two villains in the city except for one, that gives me one extra turn to prevent things from escaping. Because preventing escaping of the tyrant villains is highest priority, I will lose if that happens too many times. So no cool effects for me, but I'm gonna go ahead and KO this one first so it doesn't get a plus from Blast Stand. And while I still have eight attack, let me check something. If I did fight this and defeat it, I would gain this Maximus for free. And while it is a four attack, its effect is not really gonna be applicable to me to give me extra attack because I need another Maximus to trigger it. So it's not really worth it to me to have. It will just get in the way of trying to draw some instinct cards. So let's stick with the original plan and take out this tyrant villain. Okay, and we haven't forgotten about our trap. Now I did generate seven recruit this turn. So I'll definitely be able to clear it. I think the first thing I wanna look at is this take one for the team. Cool, this gives me one recruit. Let's me draw another Brotherhood ally, which is just going to be a Sabretooth if I draw it, which I will often. There's a lot of Sabretooth in that deck. Or I can KO it. Super useful. No attack on its own, but it can either get rid of one of the gray cards for me or help me draw more Sabretooths. That's always good. And I have to recruit things this turn to avoid the trap. So let's spend four and recruit this. And then with three remaining, let's see if something better shows up. A Bullseye for six. We'll look at that if we're able to recruit it. Now, I don't really want this to fulfill the contract but it's the only other thing in the HQ that I can recruit and avoid the trap. Now the trap does say recruit two heroes, not two heroes from the HQ. So I could recruit a sidekick or a new recruit or Madame Hydra. However, if I look at my victory pile, my left victory pile, I have KO'd two Dark Avengers over here. So this would give me two recruit, 
but also I could just dodge it and get it out of the way if I don't want to use it. So it's not going to get in the way as a dodge card. It might only help me as an instinct card. So let me go ahead and recruit that too. All right, and as we refill this, we have to look at our trap. And yes, yeah, so we have recruited two heroes, so we get to KO this trap and put it in our victory pile. Nice. Most productive turn so far. Let's keep that up. I think the scheme twists are going to have to show up soon, so this is probably going to be one of those. Oh, not even yet. Well, the strongest of the tyrant villains keeps showing up. That's not good. Not only is this one a 16, but it has last stand because it's in Sentry's Tower, so it is actually a 17 for this open city space. Well, at least I finally seem to have generated a lot of recruit. Before I play anything, let me determine if I want to play these Madame Hydras, because I will have to discard something if I want to play them. If I do not, I would generate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Recruit. If I do play it and discard one of these, I'll get one additional Recruit, so that'll be a total of 6 Recruit. Let me check out this Bullseye. Choose an Adversary, which is Villain. It gets minus 1 attack for each Adversary in your Victory Pile from that Adversary group. Again, I don't have a Victory Pile except for one Bystander on the right. But it is 3 attack by itself. And I can use this Covert to trigger something like this Defeat a Henchman for a free Maximus card. So yeah, I won't be able to generate enough attack to hit anything anyway. So let's go ahead and play this Madame Hydra by discarding this Hydra operative. And we'll play Madame Hydra. Then we'll play our two other operatives. Finally, our Maximus, called Mental Domination. I can't trigger the superpower, I don't have another red card. But speaking of red cards, I will recruit this Specialist Assassin Bullseye. And then we have... Okay, another one for the left over here. Now these two form from oozes. If I were to play them both, I would get plus four attack only for the Mastermind, which again, I can't fight yet because I can't use form from ooze towards human shields because they're technically not the Mastermind, it is human shields. So based on that, I'm actually going to teleport both of my man things and keep them going so that eventually they'll be able to stack up with whatever else I have. So I've teleported them both to the top of my deck and my turn is over. All right, I've set it up so there will be no escapes this turn, but here we go, Master Strike. Once again, Arcade captures a random bystander from each player's victory pile. The right side has one bystander, so that's going to go to Arcade. And then the left side also only has one bystander, so Arcade gets two new human shields. The good news is I didn't get any wounds. The bad news is he is now up to how he was when we started at five human shields. Ah, looks like I drew my awesome stuff again. So great cards first. I'm actually going to play Leap of the Tiger next. I figure this will give Living Weapon a better chance to draw different cost cards. Because if I draw a zero cost card, since most of my deck is zero cost cards, it's going to give me slightly better chances at not drawing two consecutive cost cards right away by discarding that zero cost card. So let's reveal it. Top card of my deck is a zero cost card. So I get to put it in my discard pile. Unfortunately, I don't get to get the extra plus two because it wasn't an instinct ally, but I had nothing to help me with that here. Oh, but I shouldn't forget to get the plus two attack. Now I'm going to play Living Weapon. I love how much attack this gives you. That's what I get for it being a nine cost. So let me get that eight attack up to 11, and let's start our deck reveal. Again, we're going to go until we reach two cards that have the same cost. Here we go. There's a zero. There's a zero. That didn't take long. I tried to improve my chances, but it didn't work. So let's play those. I get one of each attack and recruit. Not as good as I wanted it to be, but still something. And then because I have three different costs of cards, I only get three recruit for this. Yeah, even though I couldn't play as much as I wanted, having that plus eight attack is a lot. Oh, I could put this Master Strike away. So again, the top priority to win the game is to defeat the Mastermind. However, I'm not going to hit the Mastermind or get rid of the Human Shields yet, and here's why. There are four Tyrant Villains per Mastermind I threw in. So that means there are two more of these Zemos that are 16 attack. I lose when five Tyrant Villains escape. So in theory, if I had four Zemos in the city and they all escaped because the last game twist makes all of the Tyrant Villains in the city escape, Evil would still not win because that would only be four. Also, the villain deck is still pretty substantial. There's plenty of time for me to get some hits in on Arcade. What I need to do is make sure that these Tyrant Villains are gone. So I will spend 11 of this 12 attack to take out this Tyrant Villain, just get it out of the way, so KO this. Okay, now that that's gone, I can look at my recruit options. Even though it's another 3 cost and will make this less effective, I still want to keep these chains going. So let's go ahead and recruit this bullseye. And maybe there will be something worthwhile taking its place. Not for me. So I'll go ahead and use 2 of the 3 remaining recruit I have to get a new recruit. 
Should give me a little bit of an advantage with one extra attack when I need it. And that's it, just chipping away. Okay, it's gotta be a scheme twist now. I mean, yeah, there it is. I knew it was coming. Okay, so this is the first twist I've pulled that happened at the same time there's a tyrant villain in the city. I have to give one of them plus two. Now I can do this strategy. If I try to do my best to keep this villain in the city, and if I get the Man-Thing card that lets me move villains around, that'll help with this. I can just put all the scheme twists on that same villain. So I'll have one super, super strong tyrant villain, which gives me a shot at KOing the others. So if that's my plan, I'm gonna put it on the one that's the least likely to escape, which is the one here on the bridge. This is now a tyrant villain with dark power. It is a total of 18 with the plus two. If I manage it correctly, it's less scary than it looks. All right, we have quite the hand because we still have those teleported man things. Oops, I forgot to get rid of my points. Okay, once again, this will do nothing because there's nothing in my victory pile. Granted, if I defeated something this turn, then I get maybe one recruit, but it's not going to be worth it. Let me go ahead and dodge this and draw a new card. And I get... Great. Since we have all our cards out, let's play Wield the Iron Fist. I get one attack for each hero with a different cost that I have. So I have a zero cost, three cost, and a two cost, and a four cost. So that is four different costs, which will give me four attack. I think that's the most attack I've generated in a while over here. Okay, now that I have a wound in my hand, I'm going to discard it to play this Madame Hydra because why not? I'm not going to do nothing this turn. Cool, now that I've done that, I have no reason to not play these gray cards because they're not going anywhere. Let's play them all. Okay, with five attack and four recruit, once again, I cannot use these form from oozes to fight anything here. There's nothing in the sewers, and then I can't hit the mastermind yet. So because that's the only two things that this can do, uh, and I can't do either of them, let's teleport both of these once more. Now this Hawkeye with last stand gets plus two. So it's a six. I can't fight it. Definitely can't fight these. So then with this five attack, the most I can do is use three of it to get one human shield. If I'm lucky, it'll be a special bystander. Maybe give me one more attack and let me take another one. But um, let's see. All right, here's one of the human shields and it is not a special bystander, but at least I've rescued one. It's good to keep rescuing those so that if a master strike happens, I don't get another wound. Now, when it comes to recruiting, this Maximus is dependent on a tech card and it has two attack. Now I've gone so far and I have too many green cards that I don't think tech is gonna be viable at this point at all. It'll just mess me up. So I'm gonna to have to avoid those cards. But this might come in handy. If I pulled two of them this turn, I would have gotten eight attack, which is not bad for two cards. I know there's another Iron Fist card in here that uses double green strength for its superpower. So let's keep that going and recruit wield the Iron Fist. All right, come on, let's do another rare here. Not quite. But now I have something to recruit on the left side. Speaking of the left side, let's let them take a turn. And we have a henchman, finally. There's 10 henchmen in here. Oh, there's nine, this is number nine. I had only drawn one before, so hopefully this will make things easier. Maybe I'll have a lot of henchmen. Too bad that I couldn't get that extra recruit early in the game, but I seem to have done okay. All right, again, looks like something we can work with. So let's play our two grays. Now to set up Leap of the Tiger, let's go ahead and play one of these. Again, Stealthy Predator lets me reveal the top three of my deck and then put them in different places. Here is the top three. I want this at the top of my deck so I can have an instinct at the top of my deck. There it goes. And this looks to be an attack generating turn, so I'm gonna draw the soldier and discard the operative. And I've gone ahead and played the soldier here for one more attack. Now we can do Leap of the Tiger. Plus two attack, reveal the top card of your deck, then put it back on top or in your discard. I'm gonna reveal it. It is an instinct card, instinct ally. I'm gonna put it back on top because I'm gonna to try to draw it. So I get two more attack for that being an instinct ally, which puts me up to five. Now I can play this bullseye. Gives me two more attack and lets me draw a card. So I'm gonna draw this one that I revealed. Okay, now before I play this, let's see if I can set up a second instinct card on top. I was lucky to draw his uncommon so soon. All right, reveal the top three one more time. And let's hope there's an instinct in this group. Oh wow, this time there's not. But, hmm. So obviously I'll discard the wound. So here's my options. I have to draw one and put one on top of the deck. If I draw this bullseye, then I can play it, draw a card, and it's gonna be this one, right? So I'll get both of them. If I put this one, if I draw this one, put this one on top of the deck, then when I play Leap of the Tiger, I'll, I'll be able to discard it, but that won't help me. So let's just do the first way. So let's draw a bullseye and put this one on top of the deck. Okay, I play my other bullseye, which gives me plus two and lets me draw a card, so plus two attack. And then of course the card I drew is another operative, we knew that. 
one more recruit from that. Now that I drew that card, there's a chance the next card on the top of my deck will still be an instinct hero or villain. So let me go ahead and get the two attack from this. That's 11. Yeah, the left side is doing real well at generating attack. Now here we go, moment of truth. The top card of the deck is awesome. It's an instinct card. So it goes back on top of the deck and I get two more attack up to 13. All right, so 13 attack. What can I do with this? We have a 16 here, we have an 18 here, and thanks to last stand, we have a four here. This is a four as well. This is a five as this is a five as well because of last stand. All right, so I don't really care if non-tyrant villains escape, and I'm going to expect for the helmet Zemos to escape. I can try to get rid of the other ones. So based on that, I'm going to try and get rid of as many human shields now as possible in order to get to the mastermind. So human shields cost three to fight, so I can get rid of four for a total of 12 here. So let's do that. Let's rescue four human shields for 12 total. Okay, that was all the human shields he had, so the next time I'm able to hit him, I can hit him. I can finally use those man things on the right side, but let's see, did I get any specials? We have a regular one, another regular one, another regular one, and finally, oh, oh yeah, this was recaptured, wasn't it? That's right, our new one, Board Gamer. The player with the most victory points draws a card that is the left side. I'm going to go ahead and draw a card and guess what it is. It's Focus Chi, which we previously revealed. Again, one recruit for each cost of hero I have. That's a three, zero, two. That's only three more recruit for me, but I'll take it. Okay, so with that six recruit, I'm going to use half of it to recruit Leap of the Tiger. Keep the chain going. Recruit this for three. And then with three recruit left, let's see if I got another one. No, there's nothing here I can afford now for three. Let's go ahead and take another new recruits for two more. Okay, Arcade is wide open, ready for our first hit. Now if I draw a Master Strike, he's not wide open anymore, so hopefully that's not the case. Yeah, that's fine. So, reminder, the Tyrants are getting powered up. But once again, I'll read this again. Twist one to seven. Put this twist under a Tyrant Villain as dark power. It gets plus two. It says put it under a Tyrant Villain, not a Tyrant Villain that does not have a twist. So I'm going to put it under the same one and just keep beefing this one up. So when it escapes, it's the only one that is beefed up. So now it is a plus four. Okay, so we're finally going to be able to utilize these form from ooze man things. But first, let's take care of these Madame Hydras. So I think I only want to use one so I can generate a total of four recruit so I can recruit this Iron Fist. So I will discard one to use the other. Reminder, it says to play this card, you must discard a card from your hand. So I'll discard this one to play that Madame Hydra. I'll play them at the same time as all of my other gray cards and add up all those points. Now with four recruit and two attack, I can finally use these form from ooze. These give me plus two usable only against the villains in the sewers where there's nobody right now or the mastermind. So if I use one, I get plus two towards the mastermind and one from my already existing points bank. That's a total of three. So let's do that once and hit the mastermind. Okay, before we see his tactic, we're going to have to rescue this bystander and do its effect. So we've rescued this rock star. When you kidnap this bystander, which I guess you could say we did, kidnap another bystander. So this one goes to my victory pile. And all right, the next one in the bystander stack is, oh cool, another special one. News reporter, when you rescue this bystander, draw a card. Don't mind if I do. It is a Hydra operative. And that's one more recruit for me. Okay, both of these bystanders go to my victory pile and let's see what the tactic is. Okay, Arcade welcomes us to his theme park. Arcade and each murder world villain in the city capture two human shields. Two's not such a big deal, and there are no other murder world villains in the city, so only Arcade gets two human shields. Unfortunately, he's back up to two human shields, which means I need to spend six attack to get rid of them, which I do not have. So this last form from Ooze who can't do anything, let's teleport this one one more time. And now we'll look at our five recruit. What does this Nexus of Realities do for me? Okay, this one also has Teleport. You may move a villain to another city space. If another villain is already there, swap them. This would be useful for using Form from Ooze to defeat things in the sewers, and also good at preventing the Zemos from escaping. However, another Wieldy Iron Fist can just generate a ton more attack for me, along with the other ones, to help me take down the Mastermind and the Human Shields. Okay, it depends on what my biggest priority is. If my biggest priority is human shields, I want to take this iron fist. But if a bigger priority is escaping villains, I want to take that one. Seeing as how I have had no villains escape and I haven't pulled many scheme twists, and I have a plan for what to do with those scheme twists when they're pulled, I think I'm okay on this scheme. I'm going to go ahead and take iron fist to help fight the mastermind. So let's recruit iron fist for four. I hope that was the right choice. And I hope there's something for the left side over here. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, another one of those, the last one. Let's see if I can recruit it. I'm gonna guess another scheme twist. It's been about that much time. Oh no, here's a murder world villain. Good timing on that too. She's going to enter the city, but also with an ambush effect. Miss Locke captures two human shields, then reveal the top card of the villain deck. If it is a trap or a master strike, play it. I've already gotten rid of a few of both, so I may be okay with this one. Okay, I've placed her back on the bridge with two human shields. Now we need to reveal the top card of the villain deck. Hopefully it is not a trap or a master strike. And it is a trap, so I do have to play that right away. Game's trying to hurt me. Okay, Sulfuric Acid Water Slide, that sounds bad. Ambush, play another card from the villain deck. Oh, cool. I went from safe to an escape right away. Oh, and it gets worse, just take a look. So first, let's do the ambush effect. Let's do this in order. Let's hope it's not a villain because then it'll lead to escapes. It is, and it happens to be another one of these. It's just getting worse. Okay, so Dark Hawkeye slash Bullseye escapes. That's not so bad because it'll help me clear out the HQ. I need to KO something, six or less. I'm not gonna use these Maximus cards at all. Let's KO this one and refill it with a, ooh, this is the one I was looking for. Iron Fist with Versatile 2. All right, now that that's done, everybody moves down. And I've got my three strongest tyrant villains in the city. Next, let's look at the trap again. By end of turn, have no villains in the sewers or suffer each player gains a wound. Here's the rub. I have a 16 cost tyrant villain in the sewers. The penalty for this is not the worst. Each player gaining a wound is not going to make me lose that much faster. It's just annoying. Let's see if that's even possible. Okay, I drew nothing but Graze and Instinct cards, so let's play this in the best order that we can. Two Hydra Soldiers give me two attack. I'm going to use this dodge strategically if I have to, so first I'm going to play one of these Sabertooth cards. Let's do Leap of the Tiger first. So again, two attack for this. Reveal the top card of my deck. Decide what to do with it. It is a zero cost Hydra operative. Okay, I'm going to put it in my discard pile. I don't get the plus two because it was not an Instinct ally, however, I can play this now, reveal the top card of the deck. If it is a Brotherhood card, I can draw it. So if it's a Sabertooth, I can draw it. Let's see what it is. It is not a Sabertooth. I'm gonna KO it. I'm gonna choose to KO this guy, so KO. And I get the one recruit from this Sabertooth, and that's it. Maybe this isn't gonna go the way I thought. So I could generate a bunch of recruit with this, but I don't need to, so I'm gonna dodge this and hopefully get something that's gonna give me some more attack. Okay, I've discarded it, and now I'm going to draw. Great. A third Hydra Soldier puts me up to five. Focus Chi again gives me how many recruit based on cost. I have three costs, four, three, zero. So I get three more recruit points. Okay, not my best turn. So the way things stand, we're not gonna be able to clear the sewers at all, so we're gonna have to accept those wounds. But let's see what we can do with what we have. Again, I can still let all the tyrant villains that are Baron Zemos escape and I'll still not lose, as long as I don't let any other ones escape. So let's use all the points we can. I'm gonna split it up to three and two. Let's take this hand ninja out for three so we can stave off one more turn before an escape. So we'll KO this one with three attack. All right, we lost three attack, but we gained one recruit. Next, we'll spend our final two attack to rescue one of the human shields attached to Miss Locke. And here it is, let's see, it is a regular bystander. Now finally, with our five recruit, the only thing I really want here is the final uncommon saber tooth, so let's recruit that. And with three left, let's see if I pull something that I could use. Interesting. It's too expensive for me to recruit this turn, but it is an instinct card that would work well with the other instinct superpower cards that I have. And help weaken some stuff. I'll have to keep this in mind for my next left hand turn. So I'll use two of the three recruit I have left to get myself a new recruits. There we go. Now unfortunately it is the end of my turn and I was unable to clear out the sewers, so each player does gain a wound. Left hand's gonna go ahead and get a regular wound, and the right hand is going to get a grievous wound. Fantastic. Let's keep going. Next we have a bystander. He's gonna be captured by this tyrant here. Alrighty. Okay, I think we can work with this. First, let's go ahead and use our new recruits. So like a sidekick, you have to put it back after you use it, but unlike a sidekick, you only draw one card, but you get one attack. So let's get our attack, and we'll put this back and draw a new card. And we get, awesome, a bullseye. I think we're gonna generate some significant attack this turn. So let's play the cards that I know I'm not gonna discard and then we'll see if we need to get rid of Madame Hydra. Specialist Assassin Bullseye gives us three attack and then I can give a villain minus one for each other villain or adversary in your victory pile from that adversary group. Again, adversary and villain group are synonymous. Unfortunately, I don't have any villains in my victory pile on the right side. So this just gives me plus three. Ooh, check this out. So Wield the Iron Fist is gonna give me 
plus how many? How many different Costa cards do I have? That's a four, six, zero, three, two. So I get plus five for this one. Pretty good. So now that I'm up to nine attack, am I gonna wanna use this man thing? That's enough attack on its own to get rid of Arcade's two human shields and then attack him one more time. But I can use man things plus two to attack him if I had one more attack to equal three. So I'm gonna dodge Madame Hydra and hopefully get a card that has at least one attack so I can make the, up that difference. Okay, she's discarded, and the next card I have is not an attack card. Oh well. So now that I've done that, we'll play all four of these great cards. And then let's look at Form from Ooze one more time. Plus two usable only against villains in the sewers or the mastermind. Even with that plus two, that would be 11 to take out the Baron in the sewers. I couldn't do that. But in order to hit Arcade, I have to get rid of the human shields anyway, which is going to cost six, three per human shield. So I'll spend six of my attack to take out both of those human shields and rescue them. Okay, with three attack left, let's see what human shields I rescued. Okay, a typical bystander and a special bystander. That's right, it's the Rockstar again, so I get to rescue another bystander, or kidnap, depending on how you want to look at it, and this one is a standard one. So I am going to play Form from Ooze, which gives me plus two attack against the Mastermind, which means that I need to only subtract one attack from my bank over here. So let's turn this down to two and hit the Mastermind. Arcade tells us how much he loves parades, and then he captures two human shields. Play an extra card from the villain deck next turn. Fantastic. Despite that being pretty annoying, we're in okay shape. So I still have two attack left. Why did I leave that? So that I can rescue one more human shield from Miss Locke. Okay, and it's a regular one. No more attack, but with this four recruit, what can I do? Oh, I could definitely take this Ancient Legacy. It's basically a free chance at two recruit or attack because you draw a card anyway when you draw it. So why not? I'll spend one recruit to get this. Maybe we'll get something for three here. Oh, we did. Okay. I know I said I wasn't going to get a lot of Maximus cards, but this is not a tech one, and I've only pulled two out of ten henchman villains, so I know a lot are coming, and I already have some red cards in the deck that can be a requirement for this superpower. So if the game goes on longer than I think it will, this will be useful, so I'll recruit this as well. Okay, maybe something for the left side over here. And it is! Not bad, still chipping away, let's keep it going. Okay, next card. It is another trap. Our protagonists have fallen into the monstrous pinball machine. By end of turn, pay any amount of recruit. Then you must reveal the top card of the hero deck. If you paid enough, recruit that hero and put this trap in your victory pile. Or suffer, KO that hero, play two extra cards from the villain deck next turn. I don't want that. Speaking of playing extra cards from the villain deck, the last mastermind tactic I got said play an extra card from the villain deck. So that was the first one, here's the second one. And it is a scheme twist. This is twist number four, so it still applies to the first rule. Again, put it under a Tyrant Villain as Dark Power, it gets plus two. Let's put it under that same Tyrant Villain, keep it going. So now it's a plus six, so it's a 22. I think that the combination of not pulling a lot of henchmen plus the traps in Murder World are helping me with this scheme because they're preventing villains from escaping, which allows some of these Tyrant Villains to stick around and lets me manipulate this game this way, so it's working out a little bit for me. Okay, so I've played my two cards in the Villain deck, my goal is to generate as much recruit as I can so I don't have to play two more. I think I'm close to doing that. Let's play my new recruits first. Give me one attack and I'll put this back. And here's my new card draw. That's a good card to draw. Let's play the greys. Give me one more point each. Focus Chi works better if I have more cards and then Bullseye works better if I've already played an instinct card. So I'm gonna play this next. I'm really loving this card this game. All right, eight attack for me. And then, oh, I have these switched again. Switch them back. I'll stop messing that up someday. Okay, now I get to reveal cards until I reveal two cards with the same cost. Hopefully I get a lot. All right, here we go. A zero cost, a three cost, a zero cost. Could have been worse. Let's play the rest of my zeros. Two more recruit from those. Oh, let's put living weapon down. I'll play leap of the tiger now. Two more attack. Reveal the top card of my deck. Let's see if it's an instinct card. And it is not. I wish I knew I was gonna get this or I wouldn't have played leap of the tiger yet but I do get to put it on top of my deck and then I can draw it with Bullseye. But I don't get the plus two. Bullseye comes in and throws some stuff, gives me two attack. Yeah, this left hand is the powerhouse of this game for sure. And because I played this instinct card, I get to draw another card, which is going to be that two cost stealthy predator that I just revealed, which we will play right away. Reveal the top three of my deck, of course. And we have two zeros and a another leap of the tiger. Now I know if I draw this, I won't be able to draw anything else, but at least I'll get two attacks. So I will draw this one, and these are the same. I'll discard one and put one on top of my deck. 
Okay, we'll play this Leap of the Tiger. Okay, it gave me two more attack, and it lets me look at the top card of my deck, which I already know what it is, and I have to put it back. Oh, no, I don't have to put it back. I'm going to choose to discard it. It wasn't an instinct card, so I don't get the extra two. And finally, we can focus Chi. Iron Fist is looking at all these villains doing villainous stuff, and he's really got to focus to make sure he doesn't lose it. That's my head cannon. So plus one recruit for each hero with a different cost. I have four different costs. Three, zero, nine, and two. So that's plus four recruit. And I'm done playing cards at 16 attack and seven recruit. I can actually take out one of these Zemos now, but I don't need to. Let's just keep striking the mastermind. So I need to pay six total attack to get through both of those human shields and rescue them. So I'll do that, bringing me down to 10. And who have I rescued? One, two special bystanders. Undercover agent, when you rescue this bystander, a player of your choice gains a shield officer. Oh, I don't even have shield officers out because none of the standard cards say them. But rules are rules, I'm gonna go get one. It doesn't say may, I have to give one to a player. I guess if I'm playing as villains, an undercover agent would actually be an appropriate way to get one. I like the synergy of the left side deck, so let's just go ahead and put this on the right side. Can I mention just for a second how much I love the special bystanders because since I have all the special bystanders from all the illustrated expansions, it just makes it so interesting. It's such a random grab bag of things that could happen. There's so many. Okay, so Alligator Trapper, when you rescue this bystander, patrol the sewers, which in a villain's campaign is at the end. If it's empty, you get plus two recruit. No, there's a tyrant there, so nope. So let's use three of our attack to actually hit the mastermind one more time. Okay, we dropped out of the pinball machine, I guess, and fell onto the roulette wheel of death. Our arcade captures a random bystander as a human shield from each one of these places. The bystander stack, okay, there's one. The escape pile, luckily there are none in the escape pile, and each other player's victory pile. So not the left side, but each other player, which is the right side's victory pile. And it's random, so which one of these bystanders will arcade capture? It is, oh, the news reporter. So just like the other tactics, arcade's gonna get two human shields. But I'm getting close here. I'm only two more hits away from defeating Arcade. Now with six attack left, I could take out both of those tactics right now. What does the right side's next hand look like? Okay, I can definitely generate enough attack, I think, to hit him. Yeah, let's just steamroll through this. Let's use the rest of our attack to get both of those bystanders slash human shields from Arcade. And if one of these gives me some extra recruit, that'll be helpful too. All right, we have the news reporter. We know about that one. Oh, and shapeshifted copycat. That's unfortunate. Okay, this one lets me draw a card, I will do so. And I get, oh, did I know that was there? I forget if I did. Remember what I said about bystanders? Yeah, this is one of the ones I don't like. When you rescue this bystander, the card becomes a villain with three attack and enters the city. It gains the ability fight KO one of your heroes. So let's put it in the city. Cool, so now I'm totally out of attack. However, I do have this one other card to play thanks to that bystander. Once again, reveal the top three of the deck and do different things with them. What do I have? Okay, interesting. What's going to be the best thing for me? This I'm going to discard. That's pretty easy. So if I take Bullseye and I play him, I can get this too. But if I get this and then play it, Bullseye is going to be revealed. And then he won't get his plus two. Because Bullseye is not an instinct. So I can get both of them. Let's go ahead and take everything's a weapon Bullseye. And put Leap of the Tiger Sabertooth on the top of the deck. Okay, now we can play everything's a weapon. Two more attack. Wow, this turn is not ending. And then we'll draw a card based on the superpower, which is going to be... This Leap of the Tiger, of course. Now the next card on top of the deck, I do not know about. So let me get my two attack for this one. And then the top of the deck is not an instinct card, so I don't get the extra plus two. But I get to choose where this goes. I'm going to put it on top of my deck because it's basically a free card draw. Wow, this is an impressive amount of cards played this turn. Now I generated four more attacks. So what should I do with it? As usual, I am playing with the final blow. So I don't defeat Arcade if I hit him one more time. At this point, it's not a big deal if one of the villains escapes, though. Because I'll survive enough to hit him one more time. I'm confident in that. But it would also be cool to win this scheme without having any of the tyrants escape. Just because I can. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and KO this copycat villain because then I get to KO one of my gray cards and make my deck just that much better. So let's KO it. And then I get to KO something. Let's KO one of these operatives. All right, I think I'm finally done fighting things. Let's look at the pinball machine one more time. Okay, pay any amount of recruit. I'm gonna use all the recruit I have. Then you must reveal the top card of the hero deck. Let's do it. It is, okay, it's a five cost. If you paid enough, recruit that hero and put this trap in your victory pile. I don't really want the hero, but I have to take it. So recruit this for the left side. And then I get this in my victory pile and I don't have to draw two villain cards next turn. 
Okay, one more step closer to winning. I think we can get this. Okay, I think I've almost got this in the bag. Yeah, here come the henchmen. Probably gonna pull a lot of these. Just a reminder, three attack, fight one, you get one recruit. Great cards, please. Then let's wield the Iron Fist. We've got a four cost, zero cost, three cost, and a two cost. That is plus four attack for me. It's kind of a toss up, but I think Iron Fist is the MVP of this game, which is ironic since he's the only true hero. I won't be able to activate the superpower, but I get to recruit. And then finally I have Form from Ooze here, which gives me again plus two towards the Mastermind or the Sewers. Since he has no human shields protecting him, let's use two from here, and then one from my attack points to attack the Mastermind once more. In a last ditch effort to win, he needs an audience. Arcade captures human shields equal to the number of villains in the city. Okay, there are five villains in the city, so he's gonna capture five human shields. He is not gonna make it easy to get the final blow. Okay, like I said, I have plenty of cards in the villain deck. I wanna try not to let anything escape. So while the city is full and last stand won't work on this henchman villain, I'm gonna go ahead and KO this henchman villain for three. So I'm down to one attack, but up to four recruit because of the fight effect. And just to clear the city out, I'll recruit this two attack Maximus, even though I won't be able to trigger the tech superpower. All right, let's see if that was worth it. Oh, and kinda, I mean, I got Bullseye's rare here. A little overkill, but I mean, there you go. More henchmen maybe? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, with five human shields and three base attack, I'm gonna have to generate 18 attack in order to win this turn. Can I get 18? Let's find out. Let's go ahead and trade in our new recruit. So let's do the first one for one attack and a new card. And my card draw is another one of these. Okay, the second one, one more attack and a new card draw. Hopefully something better this time, and it is. Let's play our soldiers. Now I'll play one of these focus cheese just to meet the superpower requirement for Leap of the Tiger. Again, plus one recruit for each hero with a different cost three and zero so it's just two recruit man i swapped them again now we'll play everything's a weapon give me two more attack now when i draw this card i'm going to hope that it's one of Sabretooth's uncommon so i can get some instinct cards placed on the top of the deck and it is not that it's a <laughs> it's a wound womp womp i heard the price is right fail sound in my head but that's fine let's roll the dice on it okay two more attack for leap of the tiger and if i'm lucky the top card of the deck will be an instinct card it's not Oh well. So this will give me one more recruit, and then the cost of the cards are still zero and three, so this will give me two more recruit. So not quite enough to win, but I have plenty of time. So I'm gonna do three things. First, I'll KO this hand ninja and get one recruit for its fight effect. Okay, then I'm gonna take out this miss lock that only has a two attack right now. And then finally, I'm gonna rescue one human shield from arcade for the final three attack. Oh, here it is, and it is. Another new Into the Cosmos Bystander Pizza Delivery Guy. When you rescue this bystander, choose one. Draw a card now, or draw an extra card when you draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn. If I draw one now, I could potentially recruit this bullseye, but it probably won't get around for me to use it this game at all. So I'll just draw an extra card next turn to try to get the final blow on the Mastermind. Okay, that being said, with my sixth recruit, I'll recruit this Burn the Fearful just because of the instinct affiliation. I can give minus one to a villain or Mastermind if there's nobody next to it. Pretty useful. Yes, let's recruit this. And then for the final two, one more new recruits. There we go, into the discard. Oh, I need to refill the HQ. What do we have? Another one of these six cost bullseyes. Okay, next turn. Probably another hand. No, it's not. It's another tyrant. Okay, what's the most attack I could generate here? Three from this card, one from this card. That's a total of four. I could get rid of a human shield with that, but I only need three for that. This is an extra. So I will discard this card to play this Madame Hydra. Discard my soldier, play my gray cards, and with Specialist Assassin here, I only get the plus three because the only adversary slash villain I have in my victory pile is the Hand Ninjas, and there are no Hand Ninjas in the city, so I can't get a minus one on any of the other villains in the city. So it's just a plus three to my attack. And then finally, same thing, this won't be useful, so let's dodge it. And in return, we're gonna get Another Madame Hydra that I can't play because I have no more cards in my hand. So let's dodge this too. And what do we get in her place? Oh, okay. So we get Mental Domination for two more recruit. And we finally meet the requirements for the superpower, defeat a henchman villain for free. Now there are no henchman villains in the city now, so that does not happen. Too bad. But I will use the three attack I generated to get one more human shield rescued. Maybe we'll get something cool. No, just a standard one. And let's take this other specialist assassin with the six recruit that I have generated. Okay, I want to see Sabretooth's rare. I haven't seen that yet. Didn't happen. 
All right, Arcade only has three more human shields, so there's a good chance I can win this next turn. What do you think? That extra 12 cards in the villain deck really helped me out this game. All right, like I thought, another henchman villain. Yeah, this might do it. Let's play our soldier, then we'll use Stealthy Predator. Okay, top three cards of my deck. What do we have? Okay, so I'll draw Bullseye and then top this card. To give me another chance to draw more cards, I'll reveal the top card of my deck. It's the same Hydra Operative. I choose to KO it, so let's go ahead and KO it. I can't forget to get that one recruit from the card. Not the Operative, the take one for the team card you see here. Now, since there's a good chance I can draw another Stealthy Predator and set it up so I can guarantee there's an Instinct card at the top, let's do our Bullseyes first. First one, two more attack, and then we'll draw a card. It's another Leap of the Tiger. Let's play our next Bullseye. Two more attack for this one. And then I'm gonna draw another card. It is not the one I wanted, but this will work. One more attack for that soldier. Okay, I'm up to six attacks, so all I need is six more attack and I can win. And these total six base attack, but let's see what happens when I use them all. Okay, first one, plus two attack. Let's reveal the top card. It is not an instinct card, I choose to discard it. Second Leap of the Tiger, two more attack. I've reversed these again. I really need to stop that. I hope I'm not bothering anybody with how often I've been doing that. Okay, top card of the deck. It is not. Discard this one. And final Leap of the Tiger. Two more attack. And then we've got a wound. The last card I draw this game is a wound. Discard it. Okay, so with that 12 attack, we're going to take out all of the Mastermind's human shields. What did we get? A special, a standard, and a standard. Ooh, special bystander is double agent of shield. When you rescue this bystander, play a copy of one of your shield heroes or Hydra allies. I don't need the attack, so... But that's the only one I have, so I'll play a copy. So I'm up to four attack now. And with my last three out of four attack, I'm going to KO the Mastermind and win the game for the protagonist. And there we go. We've done it. We have won the game. So my strategy on the left-hand side seemed to be the strongest, and I figured that would be the case with the great synergy of all the instant cards with four out of the five heroes. The right side did okay support, it hung in there and supported the left hand, which uh, may not have happened if there were two individuals playing, but because I was able to sacrifice some of the efforts of the right side to make the left side better, also the combination of Murder World with this scheme helped me out. More traps and more locations mean fewer things entering the city, which means harder for the villains to escape. But this was a really fun setup, especially with using Man-Thing with the villain set with the reverse city. I really enjoyed that. I also got lucky drawing three stealthy predators right off the bat and a lot of Sabertooth cards. And that rare Iron Fist being recruitable early on really helped me out too. So, a yeah, pretty fun, pretty lucky playthrough, but I still had to make the right moves there. Alright, I'm going to tally up both sides' victory points. If you were paying attention, you should be able to tell which one performed better when it comes to victory points. So see if you can make a guess and find out if you were right. Before I do that, I want to make sure I thank you guys for supporting my channel. I'm almost at 100 subscribers. I have something fun planned for when I get there. I really appreciate your guys' support. Make sure to like and subscribe if you have not done so yet. Please tell your friends who may also like Legendary or other deck building games or other board games about my channel. I'd love to keep doing more for you guys, so anything you can do to help this channel grow would be awesome. Don't forget to check out the description for all links to our socials, including Facebook, Twitter, our Discord, and our Twitch account. You can also find information on the Choose Your Own Adventure Legendary Marvel campaign that I have been working on in collaboration with One More Game that is in the description as well. And if you played it and want to talk about it, there is a spoiler discussion chat on our Discord, so make sure to check that out if you want to tell us what path you took and any feedback you have on the game as we get Chapter 3 ready for you. Alright, let's take a look at these victory points. Do you have your guess? Okay, let's start with the right side. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17 total for the right side. Now to the left. Okay, do I even have to count them? Left is gonna win, let's find out how by how much. 2, 9, 12, 18, 55. That's with counting the tyrant villains as their mastermind tactic victory points. I'm gonna guess that's what you're supposed to do. There doesn't say otherwise, but there you go. Okay, it's nice to have a victory, that was fun. That was a really fun game, I enjoyed that setup. Thanks again for watching Bagel Top Games. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you here for the next one. Take care.